In this section of our notes, we're going to be talking about other molecules and living things besides water. So we're going to start to focus on the four types of organic molecules that are used to build your cells. Now, these molecules that I'm going to be talking about, the proteins, carbs, lipids, and nucleic acids, are considered organic molecules. And what we mean by that is they are organic if they have both C and H, carbon and hydrogen atoms, in their structure. So if you see both carbon and hydrogen atoms, you know you're looking at an organic molecule. So in contrast, an inorganic molecule lacks both carbon and hydrogen. So let's go ahead and write that, but let's put an X through it. So they do not have carbon and hydrogen. When we look at these examples, so this is hydrochloric acid, hydrogen and chlorine. There's no carbon atoms, no carbon in water. It's just two hydrogens and one's oxygens. Um, I can give you another example here. Sodium chloride is one sodium atom, one chloride atom, no carbon atoms or hydrogen atoms. So these are big examples of organic molecules. They have both C's and H's. Here's another one that you probably have heard of before, C6H12O6. That would be glucose. Glucose is considered an organic molecule because it has carbon and hydrogen. Well, sometimes when I'm talking about organic molecules, I'll mention these carbon-based molecules. And we say that they're carbon-based because they have carbon. And carbon is really more kind of the central backbone. It's kind of the main part of these molecules. And then other elements, other atoms are attached to those carbon atoms. So you can see this is a, there's a central carbon atom. And then this organic molecule, you can see all of these carbon atoms and it looks like we have all these other atoms then attached onto them. So we're going to take a second to look at these six molecules down here and determine whether they are organic or inorganic. So again, if they have both C and H, then they're going to be organic. So I see C and H, so I'm just going to put an O there for organic. C and H, organic, organic. So there's three of them that are organic. These do not have carbon and hydrogen. So we would call them inorganic. And this one has hydrogens, but it doesn't have carbon. It has to have both. So we're going to go with inorganic. So as I mentioned, there's four main types of carbon-based organic molecules that we're going to spend the rest of this unit talking about. Your proteins, your carbs, your lipids, and your clay acids. Those are the molecules that build your cells and are utilized by your cells for different processes. Now you probably already know that if you need energy, like for example, if you're gonna have a big game the next day, your coach is gonna tell you to load up on carbs the night before. Because carbohydrates are the primary energy source for your cells. So we're gonna write carbohydrates. So it's easy for your cells to access the energy that's in carbohydrates, so that's where we use them for energy. There are some cell structures that are built out of carbohydrates, but not many, um, but there are a few. We'll talk more about those in other units. The next type that we're gonna look at here, looks like there's lots of uses for these molecules. These are your proteins. Now, before we talk a little bit about the proteins, let's go down to this next one. It says provides energy. So if you are, um, if you ever watch the show like Naked and Afraid, then you know that sometimes people don't eat for you know, a couple weeks. In that situation when they're not consuming food, their body is gonna use all the carbs that they had whenever they started the show. And then whenever they're out of carbohydrates, then their body is gonna start tapping into something different for energy. And it's not gonna be the proteins yet, your body is going to start to utilize your lipids or your fats for energy. When you are out of fats, then your body is going to last resort, start to break down some proteins. But if you look here at some of the functions of proteins, you can see how important they are. And we don't want to be breaking down these molecules for energy. Um, we can, in the very, very, like I said, last resort to try to stay alive, but we don't want to break down um, proteins that assist in chemical reactions because those reactions are keeping you alive. You have many hormones that are proteins. We don't want to break them down because then your cells aren't going to receive different signals for you to do things. Um, so there's a lot of different uses of proteins. We'll talk more about those. And then finally, if you look here, we have DNA, we have RNA, that NA, that stands for nucleic acids. 
Now you maybe have heard of ATP, and ATP is the form of energy that cells use. And uh, ATP is actually a nucleic acid. Most people don't realize that, but um, it's just the form of energy that cells can use. We break down our carbs, and then we use those carbs and to, to build and store energy in ATP, and this is the form that cells can use. And so that's done in the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. We'll learn more about ATP production in the next unit. All right, these molecules that we just talked about, your proteins, your carbs, your lipids, nucleic acids, they are big molecules. And how we build or get big molecules is we take small ones and we just link them together. Those small molecules, we call them monomers. Now, mono means one. So this is one monomer right there and another monomer. So these are all small molecules. And if we link them together, we get a bigger molecule, which we can call a polymer. So remember, poly means many. Now, if we keep linking a bunch of monomers together, we're going to get a really, really big molecules like DNA. DNA is about six feet long. So it's a really big molecule. And that's just in one of your cells. And so sometimes we refer to these molecules as macromolecules. It just means that they're really, really big. Now, to build these molecules and break down these big molecules into smaller ones, um, we have two different types of reactions that will occur in cells. So if you look here in this diagram, it looks like we're taking two small molecules. So in this case, this would be a monomer, just one small molecule, and another monomer. If you link those together, then you get, we're starting to build a polymer. We're starting to build a molecule. So whenever we are building polymers, we're linking monomers together to build, that process is called dehydration synthesis. Dehydration synthesis. Dehydration means to pull out water. So this is why we named what's happening here dehydration synthesis. If you notice between these two monomers, we've got an O and an H and an H. If we remove them, then that's going to form water. So we are pulling out water. So let's put pulling out water. And then therefore, a bond now can form between these two monomers and now they're stuck together. We're building a molecule. So in dehydration synthesis, water molecules are formed. If you want to do the opposite, if you want to take a polymer and break it apart, well, you have to put the water molecule back in that was removed initially to bond those two together. This process of breaking apart polymers into monomers is called hydrolysis. Now, hydro means water and lysis means to break. So if you imagine, if we could take water and shoot it at something, then we could break it apart. And so we are adding water to break apart these two monomers or to break apart the polymer. So in this case, it looks like we're taking a bigger molecule and we're breaking it down into smaller. You'll want to take a second to hit pause and see if you can answer these three questions down here. So is this showing hydrolysis or dehydration synthesis? Same with this one and with this one. When you look at this process, you have a molecule, and it looks like when we're done, it's been broken into pieces. So we're going to shoot water. So think of water being shot at that bond to break it. So that would be hydrolysis. Here we have small molecules, and it looks like we are building, we are putting them together into one big molecule. So that's going to be dehydration synthesis. And every time we link them together, a water molecule is made. We link those together, a water molecule is made. In this case, we link those together, a water molecule was made. So we formed water. We pulled out water, dehydration synthesis. Over here, it looks like we have a one big molecule, and we break off this last part. Again, to break, we're going to add water to break that bond. So that is hydrolysis.
right, now we're going to look at some structures of our proteins, carbs, lipids, and nucleic acids. If I give you diagrams like this down here, you should be able to tell me what type of molecule that is, if it's a protein, a carb, a lipid, or a nucleic acid. Now, I just mentioned that to make these molecules, we take smaller molecules and we bond them together. Now, for each type of organic molecule, they have their own specific monomers that have to be bound together in order to make these bigger molecules. So if you want to make a protein, the monomers you're going to need to bond together are called amino acids. If you want to build a carbohydrate, you can't use amino acids and link them together. You're going to have to use some simple sugars or some monosaccharides. If you need to build lipids, you need to get monomers and piece them together, and those are called fatty acid chains because they do look like long chains. And if you want to build a nucleic acid, you're going to need a bunch of nucleotides. We're going to bond them together by dehydration synthesis. So down here, I've got some pictures of molecules. And you can see that for this one right here, I'm telling you this is an amino acid. And this is an amino acid. And here's another amino acid. So since you can see that's a bunch of amino acids, you should be able to recognize that that is a protein. Now, this shows us RNA and DNA, so obviously these are nucleic acids, but if I didn't have that up there, you should still be able to recognize that this is a nucleic acid because it says here is a nucleotide. So you can see if I box in these three pictures, that's another nuclei, nucleotide. So to make this molecule, we're just stringing together nucleotides and that's building a nucleic acid like DNA or RNA. So this is a nucleic acid. If you see fatty acid chains, see how they look like chains? Then this must be a fat or a lipid. And then if you see a molecule and it identifies that each of these small monomers or small molecules are monosaccharides, then you're looking at a carbohydrate. So starch is a carbohydrate made of many monomers, many monosaccharides linked together. Sometimes, though, we won't give you the different monomers. We won't label them for you. And so in that case, you can't use this information. And so then you have to remember um, or identify the molecule based on the elements that you see in it. Now remember, elements are basically what's on that periodic table of elements. So oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen. Whenever you have a carbohydrate, you're going to see that they're built of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now if you remember, these are actually all organic. So that means they all have carbon and hydrogen. They're also all going to have oxygen but not all organic molecules have oxygen, like CH4. That's organic, but it lacks oxygen. But these all have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen to start. Now, let's um, add our proteins. And to help you remember the two additional elements in proteins, if you think of proteins ends in NS, then let's add that over here because there's nitrogen atoms and some sulfur atoms in proteins. Now, I will say that most of the time when you look at a picture of protein, you're just going to see carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. But there are a couple amino acids that have sulfur atoms in their side chains. Most of our carbohydrates are going to be carb or C, H, and O. And this is how you're going to be able to tell that it is, in fact, a carb, is because you're going to see a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. So, like, for example, you'll see, like, C6, H12, O6. A 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So then you're seeing a carb. Because most of your lipids are going to be carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen as well. But how you can tell the difference, again, is the ratio in the, in the carbohydrates. But let's put a box around the C and the H. And let's just indicate there's going to be lots. You're going to have lots of carbon and hydrogen, very few oxygens. And if that's the case, then you're looking at a lipid. Now there is one type of lipid that has phosphorus in it. So let's write CHOP over here. And let's just put like a star kind of right here because, like I said, this phosphorus atom 
you're going to find that in only one type of lipid, the phospholipids. But most of them are going to be C, H, and O, and you're going to see lots of C's and H's compared to the O. Nucleic acids, you'll see carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and nitrogen. And you'll have to see all of them in order for it to be a nucleic acid. So if we go down here and take a look at some of our pictures, it looks like we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So we're seeing C, H, O, and N. And so then we know that that's going to be a protein. Now something um, that is just kind of a known fact when it comes to organic chemistry or chemistry and structure of organic molecules, organic chems, you're studying organic molecules, every single uh, corner here, there's a carbon atom. So I'm just going to put the carbon atoms in here. You don't have to. But the reason why I wanted you to know that those carbon atoms are there is if you count the carbon atoms, you're going to get C12. You're going to see that there, if you count all the H's, there's going to be 24. If you count all the oxygens, you're going to see there's 12. And so since we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio, then we are looking at a carbohydrate. So again, we saw that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Down here, if you look, and you got to look carefully because there's usually only one, but there's a phosphate, there's a few nitrogens. Looks like we have C, H, O, P, and N. So we must be looking at a nucleic acid. We have lots of C's and H's, and it looks like we have a few O's. So I'm seeing C, H's, and O's. There are lots of C's and H's, so we must be looking at a lipid. Okay, so we have a really high ratio of C's and H's compared to a low number of oxygens. And then the last one, I just want to show you, you see the fatty acid chain, so you're like, this must be a lipid, right? But notice we've got a P in there with the C and the H's and the O. C, H, O, P. So this is the one lipid that has phosphorus atoms in it. And it's called a phospholipid, but it is a lipid.